Good morning and welcome to the Friday edition of the Tennessee Valley this morning. It's Friday, everybody. Thank goodness it's Friday. Yes, Dan it's Howell a wonderful here with, Friday. Dan Howell here with my co-host, Michelle Baker. I don't know who this vagrant is uh, who slipped in off the street. We have a very big show today, Dan. We have a big show today. Have, uh, By the way, this is Rob Altman. He's on the last segment, but he decided to horn in on the first segment. Get off my Terry show. What Michelle are you Baker will be here today. <laughs> what are you doing on my show? We're also going to have Julia from the Red Cross. How and was he? on the movie guys again. Now get it right. It's the How was he chapter of the American Red Cross. I said the Red Cross. You just said the Red Cross. How was he chapter? How was he chapter? Cross. When Julia gets on here, she's a very gracious lady, and she's going to show you that that didn't bother her. Probably not. <laughs> that I said that. But you know, we got a lot. It of bothers me that you're here. What are you doing on my show this early? You never are on my this show. This throws this you off. Well, yeah, Dan and I always just get to sit here and chit chat. I'll tell and talk you the truth. Kids I'll tell you the kids. truth. The reason that I am on the show right now mm -hmm. is because typically I only get to see the end of the show. You never see the opening. We come in at the end of the show, Julia, and we come on here and I have no idea what has gone on before. <laughs> We get on here and people start talking to us about quality control issues. I see. And I said, we'll, we'll get in there, we'll get in there and we'll take a look. And then when you said that the opening segment is you going through birthdays yeah, and chit-chatting and just talking, yeah. I thought this sounds like a fun place to be. It, it is. is a fun place so to if be. you don't mind, I'll sit here, I will try to remain quiet and I'll... Well, that's, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. No, really. You guys go on. No, okay. I just want to see how it works. Well, we do have some birthdays. We do have some birthdays. We have a birthday. Yeah. Connie Redmond. Excuse me. Uh, come, oh. on, come on come around, on around, Ryan. Here's the other, here's the other guy, hey, the Ryan. vagrant that's fought, walked in off the street <laughs> drinking our water. <laughs> Whose water what was that? Was that your water? Here, it's the first two minutes of the show. <laughs> oh, was that your water? <laughs> I've already lost control of the show. I don't oh, know. It's I don't We're going to talk about some it's really It's the weather that's got us all crazy. I guess so. Let's talk about birthdays. Birthdays. Connie Redmond, she's a minister at Mercy Missions Outreach here in Cleveland. She's having a birthday today. Happy birthday happy to birthday. Connie happy Redmond. Birthday. You want to sing, Rob? That's terrifying. You want to sing? See, they, they switched the camera, too. They did, yeah. yeah you want to go ahead and sing since they got a close up. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Her name is Connie. Connie, happy birthday <laughs> to you. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday, dear Connie, minister at some church somewhere. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Oh, What's the next one? That. The next one is Lucretia Howell Nichols. No Happy relation to me as far as I know. Lucretia. Lucretia. Happy birthday, Lucretia. <laughs> Happy birthday, Lucretia. Sets are turning off all over Bradley County. I know, and they're like, ah! <laughs> well, I don't want to do it for Connie and not for Lucretia. Well, tell me, true. we don't have a ton of these, do we? Uh, well, we do have one more, but let me tell you about Lucretia. Yeah, She's a veterinary do. assistant at Equine Medical Center. That's a veterinary clinic. Fantastic. And Lucretia uh, is is having a birthday today. I don't know how old she is, and I wouldn't tell you if I knew because you don't tell them. Like you don't that. tell them. Oh, no, you also, don't. Also, Crystal Anderson Cranfield. Happy birthday, <laughs> Crystal Anderson Crystal Cranfield. <laughs> Happy birthday, <laughs> Crystal Anderson Cranfield. <laughs> Happy birthday, Krista Anderson Cranfield. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Okay, I have to. So happy birthday. To all. To By the way, them. Crystal works at uh, United Christian Academy here in yeah. Cleveland. And yeah. you, my, how are you going to follow now, that? I'm, I'm, okay, my son, I'm not sure I'm going to be back on the show before his birthday, but my son Zach turns 20 next Saturday. Zach. My Zach. You got a song for Zach? You don't want to do it next week? Well, I don't know that I'll be on oh, here next week. Happy so. birthday <laughs> to Zach. Next week. <laughs> next week. Happy birthday to Zach next week. Happy birthday to Zach next week. <laughs> happy birthday to you. There you go. Happy birthday, well, I'll say this. With every moment. Julia looks less enthused. Oh, I, about I, I can't imagine show. why. I can't imagine why. You don't so have to worry, Julia. I won't be here for your segment. If you're <laughs> if you're just tuning in to a Tennessee Valley this morning, wondering what's going on, so are we. Yeah. Uh, hey, Rob Alderman is normally our uh, no, I'm on movie Dan's guy show. on the very last segment. 
But he walked in off the street. And, hey, I'm on Dan Howell's show there right he now. There he is. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's on the show. Yeah, I'm on Dan uh, Howell's show right now. I want to tell you that today is a, f a very special day. It is? Yeah. It is. It is. Very okay. special day. Is, and, why and, why and is it so special today? It's Friday the 13th. <gasps> it is. Yeah. See, I could have gone all day without and thinking And not knowing that. that. Yeah. Friday the 13th. Wasn't there a movie by that name, Movie Guy? There, there were several. Several, several Friday the 13th. There were several of them, and you've terrified me. I didn't even realize I that today either. was such a, a bad oh, omen. Oh, yeah. Well, it is, and it's the, I've got a little few notes here I want to tell you about, Friday the 13th. Please. All right. It is the most widespread superstition in the United States. Really? Oh. Yeah, it is. Some people refuse to go to work on Friday the 13th. Hmm. Because they're terrified. Because they're terrified. Some, Some people won't eat in restaurants. I don't know why they won't eat in restaurants. Maybe they're turned, afraid of getting choked or something. I don't know. Many will not uh, think of setting a wedding date on Friday. Oh, no. Now, I wouldn't have done that. You I'm not overly done. superstitious, but I would have never done that. One estimate, and this is people who did their homework, one estimate says that 21 million Americans suffer from the Friday the 13th phobia. There's huh. a big long name about that long I couldn't pronounce couldn't it. Really? Pronounce it. So I just said Friday the Thirteenth. And phobia. it's an actual phobia. Yeah, it is. Huh. Actual phobia, and uh, some people just they just get incapacitated and go to bed and turn the lights out. They just stay in bed all day. See, wow. that, that it amazes me too that that's the biggest phobia in the United States because I would have thought it would be walking under a ladder I or have, black cat. I have, have a uh, I have a Friday the Thirteenth trivia. You do? Yeah. Do you want to know it? Uh, sure. <laughs> I was born. <laughs> on Friday, the true story. No, you weren't. April 13th, Friday the 13th, 1974, Rob Alderman, born. Really? Wow. On Friday the 13th. On Friday the 13th. And of 13. course, it doesn't fall on a Friday every year. Correct. It, no, it's not it always. It varies. Yeah. Wow. But that's, yeah. So that's that may explain, on a Friday that may explain a lot, don't you think? Michelle? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe unfair. we should be superstitious about that's Friday unfair. the That's Thursday. unfair. <laughs> that is true. That is true. And also, uh, one last piece of trivia. Some people are so paralyzed by fear that they avoid their normal routines and doing business on Friday the 13th. So, hey, we're here, so we're not... We're here. We're fine. We're not superstitious. Yeah, no. Yeah, Friday mm. the 13th is going to be a good day. Even after all the weather and crazy things, in the, all the stuff this week. Yeah, but 21 million people, that's what, do your math real quick, what, 8, 10%, 8% of the population wow. affected by... Uh, now, if phobia. I cared about math at all, I <laughs> you would do that. Really. That that's a lot of people. <laughs> Twenty-one million yeah. is a lot of people. It's bigger than some countries, but that's what's mm. happening today. It is Friday. I didn't the realize 13th. that at all. Yeah. I could have known gone all day. <laughs> Another thing that's happening today is weather, and yeah. uh, that's that's a good segue into looking at our weather forecast. Shall we do that, Rob? Since you've kind of taken over should. the show. Okay. Weather. Okay, now. let's look at the weather graphic that just magically is going to appear right there on the seat. There Told it you. is. Today's weather is partly cloudy. Tomorrow's weather is partly cloudy. Sunday's weather is going to be a decent weekend. Look at that. Mostly sunny. Uh, today's high, it's going to be cold, 37. Yeah, that's, but it's, what, that's just what I was looking at, the 37. Yeah, but uh, tomorrow, you know, I've got a three-day weekend coming up. So oh. tomorrow is 45. Sunday is 47. I wonder what Monday's going to be. Uh, we'll find out, but um, I'm off Monday too. You're off Monday. Yeah. When exactly do you leave? When do I leave? Yeah, when do you go out of town? Uh, usually on a three-day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, but but you need to understand. But anyhow, your overnight lows, that's not too good. It's going to get below freezing. So <laughs> that's funny, the graphic's still up there. Yeah, if you, you were talking more, about weather like three minutes ago. They knew that I was going to come back to <laughs> and it. It's, see. And it's still cold. So it's tonight, still cold. it's going to be 20 degrees. So if you're like me, uh, if you got a, a uh, pump house. Yes. Because I'm on well water. Ins insulate, heat your Make pump sure house. your heater is turned on because yes. last year I was new out there. I bought the house, didn't know it winter came, and I got up one morning to take a shower. I had no, no water. water. My pump yeah. froze, so turn no your pump water. on out. Yeah. Too. Now, on to this three day weekend issue, Daniel. Yeah. You're a man of leisure now. I am? Yeah, I mean, you're a man you about mean town. Three you're day a high weekend? speed individuals so high you speed. could take a weekend anybody that you want. knows me will tell you i don't move at high speed i've seen i'm you. pretty laid back I, you have a very nice <laughs> sports car and a boat mm -hmm. you are in both politics and media which is very difficult to do um so you say i'm doing a you balancing could take a act weekend here. anytime you want you could just say 
I'm a man of leisure. I'm going to take a three-day weekend, and it's going to run from Tuesday to Thursday. No, this one's going to if run you to wanted, Friday so that's night why to I asked. Monday night. This one's Are you going anywhere good? I'm going to go up to the Sand Hill Crane Festival just about five miles from my house. <laughs> <laughs> Is that fun? Have you been before? It's, yeah, it's every year. There's probably 40, 50,000 Sand Hill Cranes migrate from Canada. And they come down and they... Uh, really? They, a lot you of them. Have been to that? Yeah. You're nodding your head like you know all about it. I do know mm -hmm. about the Sand Hill Cranes. I've just Where does this happen? It's an amazing site. Can it's, you tell uh, the good people out there more about it? I can tell. It? The Sand Hill Crane Festival is this, I think it's the, uh, yeah, it's this weekend, 13th or 14th. Uh -huh. Yeah. So that's this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's up in Georgetown. There'd be uh, stuff going on. Find it online. Just Google Sand Hill Cranes, Tennessee, Hawassi River. And you'll find it, but there's all kinds of activities. Three day weekend. They get got a little it. crazy. You? You get a little crazy get at the crazy. scene. Okay? I just I take my camera and I take some crazy photos. But there People are tens, tens, tens there. of thousands of sandhill cranes. Seriously, that come and many thousands stay. Some of them go on to Florida mm -hmm. to the Everglades, but they many of them winter right there, yeah. where the Hawassi and the Tennessee really? River come together. And Ryan and I join you. Uh, I have to think about that. <laughs> at that <laughs> because festival? you've you've crashed my show. <laughs> And uh, I, I really gotta, didn't mean to. I was going to find a nice way to get out of here. You were? Yeah, I really want to. Well, we're going to take I'll, a break in a minute. Very awkward. Say, well, when, when you come back, I won't be here. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Hi, Ryan. Are you Hi. feeling left out? <laughs> Are you feeling left out? I, I, I heard you inviting me. I'm glad that you're, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> All those rumors that we heard about the quality control of this show. It's worse than we thought. It is. It is. It's much worse. When you I guys show up, it just goes to pot. Dan is taking three-day weekends and partying with the Sandhill Cranes. I am. Yeah. So it's worse than we thought. Yeah. Sandhill Cranes. It's going to be fun. I'm going to take my camera. I have a new camera. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. I have a new uh, Canon uh, Rebel X XS5. XS1. Ooh, XS1. Nice. I told you, he's yeah. a man of leisure, isn't he? <laughs> oh, with two lenses. Dan, I got two lenses. Two lenses? Yeah. Julia, this is crazy in here. <laughs> so I'm going to take some photographs. Show is crazy. I'm going to take some photographs. Sure. We're talking thousands of sandhill cranes and Dan with two lenses on a three day weekend. <laughs> I think it's about time. It's starting to get slow now, so I think we'll take a break. <laughs> right when it ramped up. Right when things, right when things start to get, get exciting, we better stop. Somebody stop throw a commercial right on there. Preferably something with Joe Palo or Dr. Markham on it. You're watching the Tennessee Valley <laughs> this morning, and I don't know what's going to happen. I've lost control. Can we control. get something about Dr. Markham saying that our hearts are no good up there? That's coming Please. up next. Yeah, let's take a break. We'll be back in just a moment and talk to uh, Julia Wright from the Hot Watch Captain. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland, is your number one Dodge Chrysler and Jeep dealer in this area. Stop by and see the brand new 2011 Chrysler 200. The 200 is essentially a new nameplate with a significant facelift to the outgoing 2010 Chrysler Sebring. A beautiful vehicle at an unbeatable price. And while you're there, check out the all new Jeep Grand Cherokee and the newly designed Dodge Durango. Redesigned, revamped, and reinvigorated. Yes, the Dodge. Durango is back, bigger and better than ever. Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep offers a complete parts and service department with qualified service technicians to fix and repair your vehicle. So for your next brand new or pre-owned vehicle, make it Kyle Dodge Chrysler Jeep, located at 511 South Lee Highway in Cleveland. How would you like to look and feel better? If so, then visit the Ford Center for Anti-Aging, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. Dr. Ford has been serving Cleveland and the surrounding area since 1984. He is a licensed physician with the Board of Anti-Aging Medicine, offering affordable Botox injections. Botox is a medication that is used to treat dynamic wrinkles such as crow's feet, forehead lines, and frown lines. In addition to Botox therapy, rejuvenate and smooth wrinkled skin the micro laser peel treats skin conditions associated with aging and active lifestyles. If you're looking for safe and affordable anti-aging treatment, call the Ford Center for Anti-Aging at 423-614-0535, located at 2020 Key Street Northwest. I'm Dr. James Markham, host of the television program Heart of Health, seen right here on WTNB Television. 
Thursday at 7 o'clock, Friday at 8 a.m., or Sunday at 3.30 p.m. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. And we're back, and you're watching the Friday morning edition of the Tennessee Valley this morning. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, it's going to be cold tonight. Yes. Don't forget to wrap up. Take your overcoat. You and know I'm not a winter person, so I, I pout every time you talk about cold weather. Yeah. you got your boots on. <laughs> I do I have see. my boots on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, but we're back, and we have uh, Julia Wright, who is the executive director of the Hawassi chapter of the American Red Cross. I scolded Rob Alderman for yes, not saying did. it right. So did I say it right, Julia? That is correct. We are the Hawassi chapter of the American Red Cross, but the great, the, but he was also correct. Uh, the one great thing about the American Red Cross is we're one Red Cross. Yeah, one Red, one Cross, Red Cross. And this so you were happened. both right then. Yeah, I guess so. so. Boy, okay. I hate to admit that. I know. Uh, <laughs> we Rob just want to could be him. right. Uh, that he could be right. Uh, he'll be back. He and Ryan will be back a little bit later. But uh, right now we're going to talk to Julia about the Red Cross and some exciting things. Of course, Red Cross been around here for a number of years, an integral part of the what I ca call the caregivers uh, of Bradley County, but not just Bradley County. You guys cover several several counties. Don't we you? cover Bradley, Mags, McMinn, and Polk counties here in East Tennessee. Um, you know, doing our basic services of, of disaster relief, like single family fires, yeah. uh, doing uh, life saving trainings like CPR and first aid. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the nurse assistant training course, mm -hmm. and, and then we also have our service armed forces where we do emergency communications mm -hmm. uh, for family members who have an emergency that get in touch mm -hmm. with their loved one that's in the military. Yeah. The uh, Red Cross was an integral part of the response to the uh, April 27th uh, storms mm -hmm. as well. And uh, my, the volunteers just really came out out of the woodwork to help yeah. you guys. We, and it's a volunteer driven organization. It is. And we processed over 150 spontaneous volunteers to help with that event in addition to our um, highly trained regular mm -hmm. volunteer core of volunteers. And together they uh, they donated over 4,700 hours just wow. in that event. Wow. Um, working a lot of hours. And, and the thing about a volunteer led organization, that volunteering doesn't stop after the tornadoes pass. Th those go on for, for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. in an event like that. But we also do this every day. Since January, we've had uh, 19 uh, families that have been displaced from their home from a fire. And, and mm -hmm. it's only. This is only the 13th of the month, and yeah. here we've already had 19 families that have lost their home yeah. and have nowhere to go. That's and the amazing. Red Cross volunteers go out and help these folks, um, you know, give them a, a place to stay. We put them up in a, in a temporary shelter, such as a hotel room uh, for single family fires. Um, and then we you know, provide them with food and clothing, and then we help them mm -hmm. um, build a, a long-term plan of how they're going to recover um, whether it's contacting their insurance company or helping them um, with it, trying to, to uh, you know, get to the next level where they're addressing those mm. issues of where am I going to live and, right. and, and those kind of things. And, and uh, like I said, our volunteers have been responding to those, and, and 19 in 13 days is a lot. Oh, matter that of fact, is. the is majority of those happened in 72 hours. Really? We wow. had uh, three days that we were we responded to the majority of those events. Uh -huh. and, and were so they, they in various were counties back. around your region? Uh, most of them were here in Bradley in County. In Bradley County. It, it, it varies. Um, disaster cannot be predicted. I've mm -hmm. had, we've had six fires in, in August on one day, so mm -hmm. they can't be predicted. That's the thing about disasters. What we can predict about disasters is they're going to happen. Yeah, that's about it. That's pretty much the, the prediction is we know they're going to happen. We just don't know when and where and to what magnitude. Mm -hmm. right. And so you just try to stay prepared. And how we try to stay prepared is by having as many volunteers available, trained volunteers. And it's really important that they come in and get trained so that they're able to help. Just as the fire department wouldn't send someone out on a fire truck to the house fire, 
we don't send someone out to a house fire to help a family without the tools and the equipment they need right. yeah. uh, before they get there. That's a very traumatic time for a family when they, it is. some of them lose everything mm -hmm. in just a matter of and, minutes. And most of the time it is everything that, yeah. because fires are, are pretty yeah. devastating. And that's where the Red Cross comes in. A lot of people may not know that that's one of the major things you do for our region is you respond to every house fire in your coverage area, yes. don't you? Yes. Uh, we average about 90 house fires a year. Wow. Um, wow. In addition, we provide support to uh, the local fire departments. We provided, most recently, we went out with the uh, Cleveland Fire Department during the uh, warehouse fire. You know, those mm -hmm. guys are out there uh -huh. for ex extremely long hours. Uh, we had volunteers out there, right there with them the whole time, feeding them, you know, making sure they had water and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they can do their job and we support them to help them be able to do their job better. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're doing those kind of activities as well. Mm -hmm. Talk about, Julia, what, what happens when a family has a house fire and you guys respond immediately, but what happens to that family? How does the Red Cross step up to help them through that immediate crisis? Well, the, the case workers, which would be our disaster volunteers that are trained as, case, as individual client services, which are case workers, they go out, um, they'll be called dispatched from either the 911 center or the fire department will call. We have a phone that these people carry with them 24 hours a day. They go on call. They, they commit themselves to a period of time that they will be available to respond. They have a team of folks that go with them. Um, they'll show up on the scene, they identify the commander um, who will direct them to the family and then they'll take the family either to the side or we you know, try to find a place that we can meet with them. Sometimes we'll maybe uh, have them meet us at our office if it's mm -hmm. like we had one fire that was really, really cold out mm -hmm. and so we just had everyone to come to our chapter uh, uh -huh. so that they weren't standing out in the cold yeah. and, and give them a warm place to, to kind of be while we were interviewing them. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll sit down with them and, and talk to them and ask them what their needs are, um, ask them you know, questions about their situation to find out what resources they have and what resources we have that can help them um, get to the next level where they'll be thinking about because when you lose your home, you don't realize that you, you don't even have a toothbrush at that mm. point. Yeah, it's gone. Um, so going back to work tomorrow might be a little bit difficult. So we've got to address these things. And we have comfort kits that have their basic um, hygiene items, toothbrush, toothpaste, those mm -hmm. kind of things. And then um, if they don't have relatives that they want to stay with, a lot of people in this area are fortunate enough to have relatives. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a, probably about a 50-50 split about who stays with relatives and which ones don't. And sometimes even staying, even if you have relatives, it's not always the ideal situation to be able, if you have a large family mm -hmm. and grandma lives in a one bedroom apartment, it's gonna be really difficult to go to grandma's house and stay with, mm -hmm. you know, if you have four kids or something. Um, so we'll identify if they need housing, uh, need a place to stay. We'll put them up in a hotel yeah. for up to three days. Three and days. during that time, we want them to start thinking about their long-term recovery plan, mm -hmm. which includes contacting their insurance company. Uh, we give them referrals to other agencies in town that provide other services that we do not provide mm -hmm. and uh, work with either their landlord or whomever they need mm -hmm. to do. And, and just try to build a really good long-term recovery plan to get them yeah. back on track and get them started. Yeah. Yeah. And it really is just a chance to get them started. It, it, <clears throat> in the end, it's really up to them to develop their recovery plan, but we're there to help them think about these things and get that started because right. they're in shock. When well, that's what I was going to say. You know, when this kind of situation, I can see someone being so overwhelmed that they don't think about a lot of the things that you're reminding them of. Most fire clients, when you first address them and talk to them about needing a place to stay, you can see it in their eyes. It's the first time they've thought about the fact that they don't have a home to go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, they're not thinking, they're thinking about all this, but then it becomes a little bit of a reality when you ask them, where are you gonna sleep tonight? Mm -hmm. And they have to think it through mm -hmm. about where they're actually gonna sleep that night. And yeah. so. So that's when it starts to hit them and, and that's what we're there for and we're there to provide emotional support as well um, and mental health services sometimes mm -hmm. and medical services. Sometimes people oh, yeah. leave their medications and things and, and we make sure that if they have life-sustaining medications, you know, if they, 
they're diabetic or have you know those oh, kind yeah. of things that, that they they have access to. Those so many things to think about. See, I wouldn't have thought about that. Even working in healthcare, I wouldn't have thought. You yeah. know, yeah. You know, there's a lot to to think about, and that's why it's really important for our volunteers to get the training mm -hmm. before they go out because they don't. The average person doesn't know to think of all of these things, and that's the training we provide. And we've got a new volunteer orientation class. Um, and, and this is like the very beginning, and, and I would like, you know, it's a new year, everybody's got their New Year's resolutions. A great New Year's resolution is come find out about the Red Cross. We have these the third Thursday of every month um, at 6.30, you can come, no obligation to volunteer. Come find out what we do, mm -hmm. find out how you could be a part of it, all the different activities that we have going on. Um, not just disaster services, but you could be a CPR instructor or you could, you know, work with the military families and, and, and do the follow-up calls with them. And, and there's just, you know, our fundraisers. There's so many different activities that the Red Cross is involved in mm -hmm. that if you volunteer, if you have any skill in real life, you're, we're going to find that skill is going to fit somewhere mm -hmm. in our repertoire yeah. of volunteer services. And, and it certainly is a volunteer-driven organization. Without mm -hmm. the volunteers, Red Cross would have a difficult Abs time providing the Absolutely. services. Absolutely. Uh, the majority of, you know, we have a very, very small staff and, and our actual disaster staff is one person. So oh, wow. y you can imagine that one person as a disaster, dedicated disaster staff cannot do all these mm -hmm. things. So they have to have volunteers mm -hmm. to, to support. And it really is a volunteer led effort and the staff are there to help support the volunteers. and provide them with the tools and the resources they need to do a good job. Mm -hmm. About how many volunteers do you have? We currently have 70. Um, wow. That fluctuates up and down. Um, and, and 70 is including our board of directors, our fundraisers, mm -hmm. our health and safety instructors. That includes all of our volunteers. Some that are just, you know, maybe come in and just do some office mm -hmm. activities. We've got the Speakers Bureau, mm -hmm. uh, where we got some that like to go out and help us do some public relations speaking and things. Right. So everyone has different talents that mm -hmm. they use, and so those are not all of our disaster volunteers, but uh, we do have a, about 30 or so disaster volunteers. Mm -hmm. We could really use a lot more disaster mm -hmm. volunteers. We can always use more. Because typically, even in a large disaster, um, only 33% of your volunteers are going to be available at any given time during a disaster. Mm -hmm. And you need people that will are, are committed enough to get that training and that you can assign them. And you need multiple people that can do the same job yeah. because they because a, a disaster is a 24-hour event and we need someone that can relieve the person that just had mm -hmm. that position. Yeah. And I'd like to remind the viewers that uh, when you give to the Red Cross, if you make that check out to the Hawassi chapter of the American Red Cross, those funds stay here in this area. Yes, you can designate your <coughs> donations uh, to the local chapter. Uh, we have various ways that you can make donations, everything from going to redcross.org and there's a, a link on there. Uh, to donate and it has a, the local uh, chapter option but it also has you know if you want to there's multiple things that Red Cross does everything from the measles initiative mm -hmm. and and those kind of things so mm -hmm. we, we're we really are an agent an organization that is you know around the corner down the street and around the world mm -hmm. and across the country we're, we're everywhere mm -hmm. um, we're probably one of the best known um, oh yeah emblems in the world next Certainly to coca-cola I think we are <laughs> And that wasn't an easy thing to come about. And this chapter has been here since 1917. Mm -hmm. So wow. we've been around a really been long a time. Yeah. And there's been a lot of folks through the years that have made this organization really something to be proud of in this mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of donations, of course, finance is an important part of what you do, and you have to constantly think about raising funds, and you've got an interesting yeah. project coming up soon. I think Michelle has the brochure on I it. I do. I'm excited about this. Tell us about we, it. We do. We have um, our uh, fund, fund chair, fund development chair has come up with a couple of fundraising ideas, and Many of you may know our Ride for the Red. We've been doing that for about three mm -hmm. years now, and, and we're still going to be doing that for the, and I kind of say for the guys, but i got a lot of girls that love that. Oh, yeah. Ride. Michelle <laughs> so I will, I will back. say it for the guys, for their benefit, <laughs> but we're still having that May the 5th. Uh, so right. we're still working on that event. But our newest event, and, and we kind of, uh, this one was a unique uh, ladies-only event. And so we really want to, 
uh, attract that philanthropic spirit of women out there. We feel like women are the caregivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. When I started the Red Cross, I said, this is, a this is a perfect organization for any woman that wants to make a difference because you take the skills that every mother or woman has, that, that nurturing, mm -hmm. caring spirit, and you, you, you put it into action at the Red Cross. And, and I, I, I think having a ladies only event is, yeah. a, is a great opportunity for us to build some camaraderie in the, in the community. It's called mom prom, but you do not have to be a mom. Yeah. Um, you have to have some point in your life maybe had a mom. How about that? Okay. All right, that um, works. So uh, <laughs> it, it is a, an event where you can get out your old prom dress. If you're one of those very lucky ladies that could actually fit in your old prom dress, me either, <laughs> um, you can drag that out and, and wear that. Or if you want to, uh, maybe you've got a dress that you haven't been able to find an event to go to and it's been in your closet and you want to wear it or it's just your nice Sunday dress that you like and it's your favorite, just get dressed up. It's a chance to get all dolled up, come out. We're gonna have a DJ playing music. We're gonna yeah. have food. Um, we're gonna have a silent auction and we're gonna have prom photos. Yeah. And, uh, and this is gonna be held at Tennessee Wesleyan College. Um, it's on at uh, Sherman Hall in, uh, on College Street in mm -hmm. Athens. Yeah. Nice and uh, mm -hmm. it's a very nice facility, and we're going to have the International Red Hatter of the Year coming to be our special guest, and oh. she's going to have uh, take photos, so you can have your photo made with the International Red Hatter of the Year, and that's mm. uh, Queen Tutu. Uh, so she'll be a she'll be attending, and let me tell you, these ladies know how to have a yes, good time. They do. Oh, they you do, do not have to be a red hatter to come, but if you are a red hatter, you're not going to want to miss it. Yeah, and that's coming up. On Saturday, February 25th, 7 to 10 p.m., yes. and you can get tickets. Can you get them online? You can get them online. You can get them at <coughs> www.mompromm.eventbrite.com. Okay. Uh, very easy process. We tried it out ourselves to make sure it worked well. Good. It's extremely simple. It works just like you'd buy a concert. <coughs> Great. Well, we have to take a break, but we wanted to give you, um, give you the information about the mom prom, and I'm about to choke. So we're going to take a break, come back with a weather forecast and some other information. Thanks a lot, Julia, for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Back in a moment. <coughs> <coughs> My uh -oh. goodness.